CarbonCredits.com is your source for carbon news, carbon pricing, carbon opportunities and more. Click to subscribe and receive notifications. What's better than a market-driven solution to a life-threatening problem? How about one market-driven solution to two life-threatening problems? One company thinks they've found a way to use captured carbon to create useful carbon polymers, materials that might replace ordinary plastics. It's the potential intersection of two industries worth hundreds of millions of dollars, with room to grow. And that's not the only big news out of the carbon market. Let's dive in. Carbon food footprints. Consumers are increasingly aware that all the food we eat comes with a carbon footprint. That's the amount of CO2 emissions that were produced as a result of growing, harvesting, shipping, packing, and selling out food. The footprint varies based on how and where everything was produced, making it a challenge for most people to estimate. Adding an official carbon footprint estimate to restaurant menus can help. The idea premiered at the COP26 conference, and restaurants around the world are starting to follow suit. Carbon plastic polymers. Carbon capture and storage is a major, and growing, sector of the global carbon market. Carbon capture and utilization is the next stage, finding a way to capture carbon emissions and turn them into useful materials. One option is to turn those emissions into carbon polymers. This isn't anything new. Over 250, OO metric tons of the stuff are already in use worldwide. But better processes and scaling might boost the market to roughly $285 billion by 2042. Pfizer's net zero pledge. Pharma companies are well accustomed to taking plenty of time to make major decisions. Bringing a new drug to market can take a decade or longer. Pfizer's new net zero pledge by 2040 serves as a capstone to 20 years of increasing focus on sustainability. The resulting plan is ambitious, also promising to cut down chain emissions by 90% of the 2019 mark. This week in new carbon markets, part 1, Hong Kong. HKEX, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, announced a partnership with HSBC, Standard Chartered, BNP Paribas, ANZ, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, Bank of China, and the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation Limited to develop a new carbon marketplace. The Hong Kong International Carbon Market Council doesn't have a release date, but with so many big names behind it, there's certainly a significant level of support. This week in New Carbon Markets, Part 2, NASDAQ XCIX. Not to be left behind, NASDAQ is partnering with Climate Impact X, CIX, to boost the latter's carbon credit spot exchange. With access to NASDAQ's infrastructure, CIX will be able to offer improved trading functions and fewer restrictions to supplier financing. The end goal is to build a world-leading carbon marketplace. Carbon catch-up. Here are some of the other key stories we've been covering the last week. Suncor's ambitious net zero plan. Increasing production and also reducing overall carbon emissions is a big task, but Suncor has a two-pronged strategy to do just that. Carbon market governance. The carbon credits market is a dynamic, complex system and so the pressure is high when it comes to its governance. But governing carbon markets can be tricky. Climate-proof your portfolio with our free guide. Within minutes, you'll learn the key to the most important commodity of the 21st century. Click the link in the description below.